I'm smart, I'm capable, I'm following my divine purpose, I'm on fire, I'm listening to my intuition, I'm a beautiful being, I'm a conscious being, and I quickly learn. I learned to do this presentation, this little PowerPoint thing I'm doing, in a day, which I'd never done anything. I watched a five-minute YouTube video. I tapped, I slid it, I breathed, I watched a little eight-year-old kid show a few things, <laughs> and then I adjusted my meridians to download that information and learn how to do this and make all the little animated graphics. It was really fun. I used to be a technophobe, right? I used to get panic attacks when I would try to go onto the internet. So anything, including new skills that you want to learn, whether it's driving a car or learning a language, you can tap the distress out of your nervous system that came from your school experience, or came from, I'm a blonde, so I can't do this, or I'm a woman, so I can't do this, or I'm a guy, so I can't do this, or whatever that is, including opening your heart. Or I'm not a healer. It's like, no, that's not true. We're all built to be self-healing, self-rectifying, self-cleansing, self-aligning, and to have personal direct access to the greater template of our beings, our own soul's loving truth, 100% of the time. So a cool thing about this technique is it also heals PTSD. Do you know what PTSD stands for? Post-traumatic stress disorder. You hear a lot about the veterans these days who are coming home and killing themselves. They're killing themselves more frequently than they're dying on the battlefield. We're getting about 120 a day dead veterans. Vietnam War did the same thing. So did World War II and so did World War I, and the one before that, and the one before that, and they had different names for it. They called it shell shocked. They called it battle fatigue. Okay, they had different names for it a long time ago. I think they would call it soldier's soul malady. And child abuse, they noticed it was stealing the light out of the children's eyes. Okay, so whether you had a civilian form of violence or injury, whether that was a car wreck or someone held you up at gunpoint or someone raped you or someone physically, you know, was rough with you or someone told you ugly things when you were in a sensitive developmental phase, there's some form of shock that still goes off in the system that may come up in bad dreams, it may come up in relationships, especially in the presence of love. It's like, oh, love, oh, great. You know, now I have a safe space to act out my subconscious pain. Except for that doesn't help the love last that long, does it? So what we want to do is address those places that are still in PTSD. And what's cool, I spent five hours uh, here in LA at a cafe tapping with a Marine Corps Special Forces medic, who I met at Burning Man this year. And, or he met me, I should say, I had about 200 people in a giant teepee at the Red Lightning Village, and we were all doing this process, and I'm wearing my angel wings, it's about 100 degrees outside. And I get an email from him when I get home saying, you probably don't even know who I am, but after we did your hour and a half thing, I went and gave all my booze away to my neighbors. I don't want it anymore. I feel better than I have in years, and I'm begging you to teach me. They're sending me to Afghanistan, which they're sending him tomorrow. And I want to meet with you before I go, because I can put their arms and legs back on, but I can't put their light back in their eyes. And whatever you did to me, I cried like a baby, and I haven't cried in years, and I'm a Marine. And I think it's going to help these guys. So I sat at a restaurant, we drank a lot of coffee, <laughs> and we did this process, and he healed chronic back pain he'd had for seven months. He had a crooked finger that was jammed. He came back, he, he couldn't do this. He was able to do this by the time we were done. The waitress came up with a big cut across her chin where she'd recently got stitches pulled out. And I said, well, watch this. You wanna heal your chin? And the waitress was like, sure. I said, I'm gonna take like two minutes. Okay, so she's washing her cables. 
I'm just standing there and we talk about what happened. Oh, well, I got drunk and I got on my bike and flew over my handlebars and landed on my chin. So we just addressed, and I didn't even ask her the story. I could imagine. There was blood everywhere, huh? Oh, yeah. It was really embarrassing. Oh, oh, so in front of all my friends? Oh, yeah. And they were really freaked out about it, right? Yeah. And we just had to release those feelings, maybe for a minute and a half, two minutes. And she touched her chin and went, oh, it doesn't hurt. Now, it didn't magically disappear. It wasn't like zzz, this little red thing was gone. But she could press on it. So we had fast forwarded what was happening underneath the skin and took it like two weeks out. So that's the kind of thing you're going to be able to do with this. So thank you, Gary Craig, for teaching me this, how to naturally regulate the energy field. Don't you love how it turns pages? It's our book. <laughs> More fire. We are made of energy. The Chinese discovered the meridians 5,000 years ago and invented acupuncture to facilitate the energy flows in the ley lines of the body. For the body and mind to function optimally, the energy must flow unimpeded. Well, yeah, right? Watch this. <laughs> Yay! Einstein says the field is the sole governing agency of the particle. Meaning that the energy field itself commands the little pixels around. So in one sense, we're little pixels in the great body of the one. And in, in a fractal sense, we're an energy field commanding little pixels in the individual body of this one, of that one, okay? Meridians conduct electricity, and there it is, your meridians. So take a look at that for a second, and just notice how, other than some places on your legs where the meridians are more spread out, there's almost no place on your body that you could touch that's not a, a key meridian line. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap on the points that are closest to the end of the line on those meridians because they have a slightly stronger electro, um, electrical charge. And as you bump on those points, you're going to be pulsing sound, heat, and light, and energy through those little points, and it's going to run down those lines and pull the short circuits physically out of your body. Now, all the meridians are one meridian, actually. It's like a long piece of thread that you might like sew a garment with. It looks like lots of little stitches in different places. But if you were to pull on that thread, that whole piece of the garment would come undone, right? So, although you're stimulating one meridian line, you're actually vibrating all the meridian lines at each point that you do. So, this process doesn't care which meridian you start with. It doesn't care if you even skip a meridian here or there. It's still going to work. I mean, how easy could they make it? Love everything. Touch yourself anywhere. Okay. <laughs> Say that it's going to be okay. <laughs> and here we go to the tapping point. So, oh, look, it's tapping. <laughs> so these are the points being activated. And as you look at that, you'll see different ones kind of sparkle up. And I'm going to go through them on your body. So everyone just do these points with me for a second. Okay, so I'll show you on my own body with you. So the first thing we're going to do is find a point somewhere in the chest, under the collarbone and the upper pectoral muscle. You're actually stimulating your lymph system. And rub around on either side until you find a sore spot in there. Find one. And I like to start here. Different practitioners start uh, often at the side of the hand here. But I like to start here because it's straight to the heart of the matter. 